Is Welcome everybody. everybody. Thanks for coming to the meeting. I have this big owl thing in my face. Um, agenda review and disposition. Is there anything to add? Uh, just to non-public session negotiations. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, minutes of October 2nd. The only thing that I noticed was um, 2022 should be 2023 for oh, the. I did not notice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where was that? That's on the call to order at the very beginning. It's not officially part of the meeting, but. Oh. She received the 2023 Outstanding um, Alumni Award. So that was the only change that I had. Did you guys have any changes? No. No? So someone like, would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All right. As Sec amended. As amended. Right? As amended. Yeah. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, recognition and awards. I would like to thank Ms. Franklin. He's on, in the waiting room. Okay. Yep. All right, perfect. I'm going to um, pass it over to Fran. She's going to present some retiring teachers with a little appreciation from the school board for all your years of hard work and thank you so I'll turn it over to Fran Hi. so I'm going to read this because I'm not really good at remembering what I've written <laughs> <laughs> the board would like to take this opportunity to public acknowledge two outstanding educators Jen Deloge and Ann Doyle um, who have made a huge impact on the students and community of our school their commitment to PES should not go unnoticed nor uncelebrated. In today's world of fast changes, we need to celebrate teachers who commit to the school and to serving their children with very little acknowledgement. Today, we celebrate their service. Jen, um, Jen has worked at the school for 39 years. I think that's the right number, if I did my, it says. 38, but. 38, 1984 <laughs> till 2023. Yeah, you're right. She's been an outstanding teacher. She's taught so many children the love of reading and writing and has gone through many changes in the curriculum and expectations for instruction and learning. Through all of these, she has kept excellence foremost in preparing students for their future as learners. She has not only taught in the classroom, but has coached different sports, theater, along with other co-curricular activities, and I can't remember them all. <laughs> I remember her teaching seventh graders to water paint while we spent a night at Mayhew Island on one fall trip. So that's pretty diverse. She's creative and caring, and we want to acknowledge this committee commitment by presenting her with a, you can't see it, but a brass bell with um, the years of service that has a ringer that you can hang up. And we would hope that she places it somewhere where friends and family notice and will ring the bell in her honor. Aww. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Annie, 19 years? Wow. Well, 2004 till 2023? And one year kind of off the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Annie traveled to Plymouth many years ago, I think from New Jersey, right? Oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> to become the speech pathologist, she too was very creative and spent hours preparing her lessons for all the children who she taught. Annie has made many games and more games for the kids to keep them motivated and excited to improve on their speech. She worked with holiday themes so kids would be surprised with what she had in store for them every day that they came to see her. She also worked on co-curricular activities, including theater. Annie created an online speech site for others to follow her ideas. She was always looking for creative ways to expand her profession. At this time, we'd like to present her too with a brass bell and hope she places it where others can ring it to acknowledge her excellence in education. No, we <laughs> apologize for that. <laughs> Better late than never. Totally no, I know. Exactly that's exactly right. right. Totally. Is. That's exactly right. Thank, Thank you, you, Fran. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that. You're gonna make them safe. Huh? Yeah. Do, you, do you want? All right. Come and make leave that safe one. Yeah. You don't have to. Oh, you. you don't have to. <laughs> 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 this is our 
biggest <laughs> gift to you. It's the benefit of being retired. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I don't want to make that awkward. Right? That's, That's awesome. Good. Uh, uh, principal's report. We're going to turn it over to you, Tanya. I have a fairly short report tonight. Our enrollment is holding steady as it had from last month. No marked changes in that. About 390 kiddos. I uh, wanted to let you all know about some school happenings. We had our fantastic Halloween parade. We'd like to say thank you to the Plymouth PD, Fire Department, SAU 48 staff, Plymouth Regional High School Principal Parsons and his staff, as well as Plymouth Recreation and our wonderful PTA for making that event fun for kids. Um, I wanted to let you know that the PSATs were taken by the eighth graders. Um, and they took that very seriously and did a good job on that. Thank you to the eighth grade team for supporting that somewhat stressful day for the students and making, trying to make it fun and meaningful for them. Um, this month, our theme at school is healthy social media and digital citizenship. We are promoting waiting until eighth grade for cell phones um, and just raising awareness around social media use. Parent-teacher conferences um, are coming up on the 13th, 14th, 14th. So we are using a digital sign-up for that, for those parent-teacher conferences called Sign Up Genius. That link went out last week. We would love it if parents could sign up earlier um, rather than later for parent-teacher conferences. That's also, the link is available on the PES homepage. Thank you, Jenny. And if you need support with how to do that, and you're, because you're not tech savvy, please just call the front office and we will work you through that. We do not need, need to struggle with that. Um, winter program sign-up link also went out. Um, and I wanted to let everyone know that we actually have a slight change in the information that went out about winter program. The Waterfall Valley is not open to us one of the days of winter program. Uh, so we are shifting. We will run winter program on January 5th, January 12th, and January 19th. Uh, those are Fridays. Those will be the first three Fridays of January. That is when we will go skiing. Well, all of the options will be available K through eight. So our middle schoolers will join us on those three days. Then we will take a week off, and then our K through five fifth grade students will have two additional days, February 2nd and February 9th. So the winter program runs three days for middle school and five days for K to eight. It was that skipping a week that we did not get out to our, to our community uh, earlier than now. Um, wanted to let you know that the ski and skate sale is November 17th and 18th and drop-off donations are on the 16th and 17th uh, in our gymnasium so please take advantage of those affordable options for winter gear <coughs> we have a number of fundraisers going on right now we do realize that there are a, a bunch going on the poinsettia sale and the wreath sale are both going on. Those support um, eighth grade and winter program. And we're excited for our Jingle Bell Run, which is a the biggest fundraiser for winter program. Um, so all three of those. So sorry. That's okay. We have, this week, we have our Veterans Day Assembly this Thursday morning, so we'll be honoring some local veterans and um, educating our students on veterans uh, this Thursday. In the area of curriculum instruction and assessment, I have a couple of um, important notes. One is our primary wing is implementing a new structure called Walk to Read. Um, where students walk across homerooms, they all stay at the same grade level, to get some s um, skill development uh, with other kids from their grades who need that specific skill to, skill to be worked on. So we're breaking down some of the homeroom walls and getting every kid what they need across the grade level. Um, that's very exciting. 
Also wanted to just update you and let you know that we, as I reported last month, we were going to have Katie Preston, who's a Holocaust survivor, come and speak to all eighth graders in SAU 48. We hosted her here at Plymouth in the gymnasium, and it was a phenomenal event, very meaningful, and all of the students of SAU 48 were incredibly respectful. We have a lot to be proud of because our students took that with the right um, attitude and and, and uh, kindness and attention to that wonderful gift of having someone speak to them about something so important. So I uh, wanted to update you on that. I have a couple of student shout outs. So our CARE Award winners this past, in, during the month of October, CARE Award winners are earning awards for their courtesy, attitude, respect, and enthusiasm. And it was Angelina McKinney in third grade, Chloe Campbell in fourth grade, and Annalise Shannon in fifth grade. So well done to those students. A couple of, well, a number of staff shout outs. Our chaperones on Friday night for the middle school dance. We had a good time wrangling all those middle schoolers. So thank you to all of the chaperones at the middle school dance. They take a time away from their own families to be here for our students and the SAU kiddos. We had no issues, it was a good time. And our preschool team, I wanted to, you know, sometimes we don't talk about our preschool teachers and they are, have got, taken those kids on some field trips down to Peace Public Library, working hard <coughs> to integrate them more so that we are more of a pre-K to eight building instead of just a K to eight building with a, wherever we house the preschool. So um, they're doing a very nice job. PTA met last Wednesday, but they will meet the first week, the first Wednesday of December here in the library at 6.30 p.m. And thank you to the PTA. They did a pop-up food event for teachers, surprised us one day with extra snacks. And all of the adults in the building were walking around saying, why, why are we getting, why is there food here today? Why, 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 why? And it was just a really wonderful way to raise people's spirits. And everyone's happy with healthy and sweet snack. So thank you to the PTA. Um, and then I just wanted to let you know that later in uh, the agenda, we'll be talking about the potential library project, but did want to update you and let you know that the exterior drainage work was completed in October and the backside of the building down to the shed. They ended up replacing a culvert. Uh, the school sign out front, you might have noticed, is lit. So the lighting uh, was completed today and the gym sound system should be installed over Thanksgiving. I have a couple of athletic updates for you because Mrs. Carey is not here this evening. She had some other things she needed to be doing. Uh, fall season came to a close. Our cross country team um, performed at the Division Four Middle School State Championship and our girls team finished fourth out of 22 teams, which is pretty phenomenal. Scoring for Plymouth were Elizabeth Sunderland, Acacia Hartley, Josie Hankins, Madeline Ron Ronkai, Caroline Frecker, Rachel Downing Santos, and Riley Mask. We had one male runner, and he had a great day. He finished fifth overall out of 121 runners. Caleb Thielbar, great job. Um, we have a picture of his smile as he came across the finish line, and it, he is beaming from it's a, it's a great picture. Um, winter signups, winter sports signups happened. We have 104 students signed up at this point, um, not including SAU students right now. Uh, and all of the the basketball schedule is posted online, and the Nordic and wrestling event schedules should be constructed and will be posted soon. Safety committee, all of we've we've done a great job. We've done a number of drills. Um, and we, including one off-site evacuation drill on October 19th. So working hard, uh, practicing for safety concerns. And that is it from the principal's office. I have a quick question. I think last time you said you had purchased something for the middle school kids for play outside. You know? The Gaga pit. The Gaga pit or swings. Oh. There is a we have swings there. on site, but we don't think they're going to get in until the spring, okay. which is a, too bad. Yeah. And the Nancy Stock, who's the student council advisor, she and I are trying to figure out how to get a second Gaga pit, pit built that's 
uh, wooden and I've learned a lot about Gaga pits. They're better if they're sunk into the yes, ground. So, um, but we don't think we're going to get that up before the snow flies. So we are still working on making the middle school playground more fun, but um, okay. we definitely, we, we're working on it. We had to get the propane tanks in, and then we realized there wasn't quite enough room for the Gaga pit where we thought there was going to be. It's a long okay. story. Anyways, we're working on it for the spring. OK, thank you. And what about the um, noisy new system in the gym that was in our notes? Did that get looked at and taken care of? The sound system? The sound there, system for the? There was a note in here. Oh, no, about the exterior, was, you mean? That the, it was loud, that the new system in the gym was noisy. Oh, the, oh yeah, there was um, air in the pipes for the new. Okay. Yes. So it that's did. been resolved. That it was, I believe the right term is bled. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Yeah. So yes. All right. Awesome. Yep. I wanted to ask about attendance. How's attendance going? Hmm. I know it that, is, that was a big goal of yours. At yes. The beginning of the year. I would say overall it is better than it was last year. That being said, we have <clears throat> probably the same percentage of kiddos with high absenteeism as we did last year. So I think overall our numbers are coming down. But our high risk people are still, yeah. And we're working, it doesn't mean we're not working on it. We're yeah making phone calls and we have um, picked some kids up um, both Kelly and myself or our school resource officer to try to get people in um, it is a challenge I think it will continue to be a challenge but it's good I could bring for next month I'll try to bring us some updates on some numbers sure. if you have it if it's not yep. too much work yeah thank you all right thanks we, we, we did those. rewrite that letter the attendance letter because there we had had a conversation at the board level um, wanting people to really know we want to work with them mm -hmm. not to set off alarms for people about DCYF so we did uh, re rewrite that piece of the letter mm -hmm. um, Great. so perfect thank you mm -hmm. thank you for those updates yes all right privilege of the floor number one thanks for coming yes Jason I know we're going to be discussing the restraint policy in, the, uh, in our next section. Uh, my just a couple questions is one, why? I assume it's required by our statute, but just want to confirm. Um, two, where did the language for this come from? Um, where did we get the track from? I don't, I don't imagine you guys wrote it up yourself. But probably got it from somewhere else. So where did, where did the language come from? Would be my next question. Okay, we'll discuss those when we talk yep. about it. So thank you for bringing up those questions. We'll certainly answer them when we get to that section. Is there anyone on Zoom? All right, perfect. Discussion items, a library project. So a few months ago, you had approved some design work to be done in here with ESSER funds um, if, if it were to be approved. So part of it was to enclose the entire area and to rework some of the entryways as well as do some of the HVAC work that needed to be done as well. So it took a while to get some of those design costs in um, and now we have the cost of it and uh, if we can cover it with the last portion of the ESSER three funds which are your COVID relief federal dollars that you have left and we're under a deadline with that. So remember really it's anything within the building that has to do with any pandemic um, issues. Mm -hmm. So spacing, H, a lot of the air HVAC, quality, air quality mm -hmm. anything like that is typically approved. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have Tanya just kind of summarize uh, what came out of that, that design work. We can cover it with ESSER funds and we even have a portion of it that was approved for a little bit of money for furniture, which was pretty surprising. We were very creative in the way we talked about spacing and movement and collaboration, you know, that whole piece. Um, so we do have some leftover monies with that. But it would, I would ask the board if they're comfortable tonight 
moving forward with that. No money out of pocket for taxpayers. We have a sole source with CCI already approved through this whole process. Same with the, um, the architect and the engineer. Um, so it's ready to go. And as you know, or maybe not know, most of it's on a timeline. So to get it done now, to get the work done this summer would be great. So the work um, would be in, done in the summer, but all the prep stuff? It would be, if we get it approved now, we can purchase all of the mechanical okay. um, items that we need that will take months. Mm -hmm. we, we need to order them. The lead time on the parts is, is pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously locking in yeah. the companies as well. So okay. we've done, redone most of our SAU schools with the SA, with the uh, ESSER monies, uh, with uh, the HVAC system stuff. So that's been a huge piece. And is it this, is this the It would be math? in keeping, it, so it, it, let me describe okay, the project. Ahead. So it includes these same basically panels yep. all the way around. So this okay. outer hallway is our main corridor right. um, and it creates quite a noise dynamic in the gymnasium er, in the library as well as the fact because it's open this space could not cannot be have an HVAC system because it's open to the entire building right you have to have an enclosed space in order to do okay. that piece so it would include the glass it would include new doorways um, at both major entries it would in uh, change this space over here to shifting the door to the right, uh, making it a double door and no windows. There's a little confidentiality dynamic between our new conference room and this space, and which would allow for bookcases then to be a, that are about the height of those to be or through this corner, mm -hmm. which makes a teaching space over here that's um, <coughs> farther away from. The, the stacks, the, um, where the volumes are. Moving the circulation desk from here to this corner and putting a second teaching space over here for some small group teaching over here with soft seating. Changing all, all of the HVAC system for this space as well as the nurse's office and this oh, room wow. here. So it's getting uh, the core of the building um, to be cooler, which we hope will help um, with general heat and, and cooling. Um, then it involves soft seating for um, a, some soft seating and new shelving units that are on wheels um, in the on the floor of the library. So the the cost of the project um, came came in at six hundred and thirty thousand dollars which was conditionally approved on uh, November 2nd mm -hmm. um, the furniture was approved separately which is forty nine thousand dollars the fur not all of the furniture I just described would be a part of that. We have to prioritize some of that furniture because the total furniture bill would probably be closer to $150,000. So we would do about a third of it with ESSER money and then we could chip away at the other pieces of it um, with other funds as they became available. And this isn't a new project, it was part of your capital improvement mm -hmm. right. plan to begin with so yeah. it was mm -hmm. one of those big projects that you would have had to withdraw from your current reserve mm -hmm. or raise the funds through your through your budget so mm -hmm. it it really helps with that piece because it's totally covered by ESSER 3 yeah and just uh, remind me um, if we don't spend that money it goes back to the it government back, right? yeah okay and conditionally approved by Ooh. Department the, of Ed. Department of Ed. Department of Ed. Yeah. In, who doles out the S funds? Correct. Got it. So and so it's a portion of the furniture. So at <laughs> some point, yeah. within your own capital plan, you'll see <coughs> that portion of furniture th that you Come still on. need mm -hmm. in there. But it's a much lesser amount, obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. Which would be about a hundred thousand dollars. So it goes through the state, but comes from the federal government. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. For certain allowable uses. Yeah. 
I think we are asking tonight for you to approve us to spend the to, sp ESSER to spend the ESSER money as movement. described. Yeah. I'll make a motion to do that. So I'll second that. All right. All in favor of approving that project? Do you have any questions? Yeah. No, Aye. Yeah. Aye. You want Frank? Frank. Frank. Yeah. Perfect. Aye. All right. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Thanks for doing all that work. Everyone else's money. money. <laughs> I'm going to send a text. Yes, <laughs> be exciting. exactly. That's so exciting. So that will be done this summer. Yeah, so and we were able is... to get a lot of projects done with that money. I mean, like millions of dollars. And this so. is a great space, but yeah. it does have a lot of limitations. And the heat yeah. is a big one. Yes. Yeah. It so. is an 11-week project. So just so the community is aware, mm -hmm. on, on paper, mm -hmm. they're... Um, as soon as school gets out, it's going it, to be happening. It, I've already been told the less snow days, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Control that, but I'll, I'll try to. Thank that you. Time. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, the first reading of the restraint and seclusion policy. Kyle, you want to take it Sure. Away? So um, it is lengthy. Um, yeah. We're not going to go through all of it tonight. I want to give you kind of a month to digest some of the language in it. Mm -hmm. It is a new law that came into place uh, this past legislative session. It would replace your current restraint and seclusion policy that came into play probably seven or eight years ago. A new law came in. Graham, that was when you were the special yeah. ed director that it, that it yeah. started. Um, and this is much more substantial. And so the background of it, the New Hampshire School Boards Association is the, who, who writes up the templates for us, um, where the Plymouth Elementary Board is part of that association. So any new law, they provide us sample policies. And it really is just the law and what's covered. There's nothing extra in it at all. The Department of Ed has already put out a technical advisory, which is their interpretation of how it's supposed to be implemented. Um, which they've changed three times since the approval of the, the <laughs> law. It's sometimes um, the folks in the legislature don't think about how schools operate, so implementing it can be a little complicated sometimes when you put it into a K-8 building. So the intent of this came from the background of it is from, and I'm sure you've seen the Youth Detention Center or YDC or more substantial residential placements for significant behavioral problems. Students were getting hurt or neglected. So mm -hmm. kids being restrained for multiple hours at a time, being put in isolation rooms for an extended period of time with no one monitoring them. Um, and that's really where that kind of, this kind of came from. So that's why you see such a significant amount of mm -hmm. emphasis on um, when you can, and, and honestly, there's been a significant uptick in behaviors that we're seeing at, in K through eight buildings, the high school, et cetera, even at the most younger age, which we've talked about before the students coming in. Um, so it's real clear on preventative behaviors and that certain restraints are not allowable anymore. Um, and even guiding students physically or leaving students in, in isolation is very limited in what we can do. What else they added in this process is a more substantial reporting procedure, or uh, before, if, if there was a restraint, it would be sent to me. We'd have to send it out by mail within a 24-hour period to the parent, um, and this has some different requirements in there as well. So if you have a substantial, significant incident with a behavior, especially when somebody gets hurt, there's, a, there's some other parameters that we have to follow with Department of Ed and the Commissioner. So if you take a look at it, like I said, it just is, it, it regurgitates the law. Um, there's nothing added, but it would replace your old one because it's irrelevant at this point. We already have to implement the law. So this is the policy that matches that. So I have a question. Um, does the staff, what training does does our staff follow for any kind of need for what's yep. allowed to be restrained? Yeah, so so we still use CPI training okay. for teachers that respond to um, aggressive behaviors. Okay. Uh, and we have, we're lucky enough at Plymouth Elementary School, we have the SAU trainers are 
Plymouth Elementary School employees. Okay. So they conduct the whole SAU um, trainings, but because there are employees, we um, we used our recent professional development day to get our crisis prevention team fully trained exclusively because we felt like our ability to communicate with each other in those moments is really important and the having a more intimate group who's working on that together makes us more effective in that and it really is about prevention always um, so in this topic and the CPI stand, it's crisis, crisis prevention institute said, first thing Good for one thing, the crisis, crisis prevention, prevention institute. institute. Intervention or institute? What's that? Prevention. Crisis prevention, prevention. institute. Institute. Okay. Um, yep. Can I ask a question? I don't know if you can tell us about this, but how often are we using restraints at our school? Very rarely. That's what I thought. I would say. Um, just guiding a student like this is considered a restraint. So me putting my hand on a student to um, assist them to, uh, it's, recess is over, you have to come in the building. It says so in numbers E2 that you can do some of that. You can do some of that, right. But we really, if we're putting our hands on a child, we're notifying parents. And it's very, very rare as a last resort it is a last resort and it has to be da danger to self or others okay. so it's not danger to the building it's not you know it really has it's very specific um, so we no longer use us this building used to have a quiet room Mm -hmm. um, where students were really secluded in that room. We no longer use that room. It's been repurposed into an office space for someone else. Um, so we have mm -hmm. uh, two big classrooms that sometimes we help kids de-escalate and they have soothing music and um, sensory tools to help them um, try to regulate and they're there with known safe staff members who can try to help them um, get nice and calm. So no action needs to be taken tonight. We'll bring it to next month's meeting for a second read. Okay. And you can decide where you want to go if you have any further questions. Okay. And we had a couple of questions. Uh, I, I have one question on it, if I could. Sure. Um, just reading over it, um, when you sent it out, it, it seems like a lot of it is geared toward more residential facilities. Is it, is it meant to cover, it, it is meant to cover all kind of educational institutions right. statewide yes yeah, so so i think that's what the the lens the law was created for those residential treatment facilities but we're all required to follow it which is where some of the issue came in with the department of ed trying yeah. to advise us on how to interpret it in a k-8 building because some of it is a little disjointed and not all relevant to the k-8 building but we're still required to have it in the policy and to follow it so the language then comes from the Department of Ed. It's right yeah. from the new law, that new RSA. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the the writing of it comes from <coughs> the New Hampshire School, School Board Boards Association. Association. Okay. Got it. Which you you are members of, so that's one of the. They have their they lawyers. Help. They have their attorneys write it. Yeah. Got it. <coughs> All right. What was um, Jason had asked a question too? I think. Do you remember? Have we addressed them? About, yes. Where the why and then the who, wrote, who wrote it. Yeah, we were all addressed. Yeah. Okay. We do have additional questions when we get to the next privilege. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. And we were able to provide the public with that, but yeah. it's sent yeah. draft on it. Right. It's so first just the first draft. Sure that it's only considered a draft mm -hmm. policy at this point. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right, any other business? No other business. Okay. All right, privilege of the floor number two. Yes, Jason. Question in regards to <clears throat> this policy, in regards to uh, Section C under the guise of retra training required. Uh, point one says each school building has a staff who's appropriately trained in proper and safe implementation of seclusion and restraint techniques. Does the SRO officer? Follow under that as a building staff and follow up as the SRO 
officer trained in restraints or anything like that? And what role would they play in this policy? They are not the, the person who trains our staff. Um, our, we have our school psychologist who is a trainer and she is the person, she and uh, John Ramsey who worked in our behavior program for a couple of decades are our trained staff people in the building, so. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, that our SRO officer is a school. Is a, is a, is town, a town, town, town employee. Yeah. yeah. So in theory, the SRO officer would have no, no connection to this policy and the implementation of it, correct? That's their role. Sometimes goes outside of that. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine that if it's, um, Something that a police it officer, right? If, a, if it's something yes. that's escalated, <laughs> and like to be clear, a, yes, yes, yes. absolutely. But <laughs> in regards just... to the need for an ed educational setting, I, you know, we want to make sure that we're, it's you know, followed by the the building staff and not outside, um, outside staff. Yeah, correct. I will say on occasion, I call for police support mm -hmm. if I have, I have a student running from the building and I need support to yes. make sure the child does not go to Merrill Street, I'm calling for any adult who can help me. <laughs> yeah, well within the guys, but I would expect yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> but they would come in as you would have a police officer approach the It's for school. safety. For yeah. safety. For safety. Right. If yes. And they have their own yes. protocol. Mm -hmm. right. Correct. And police officers are trained in all of that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other questions online? No? All right. Perfect. Everyone sign the... I don't think I have yet. Okay. All right. Manifest. And is there any correspondence? I have no correspondence. Okay. So we just need um, a motion to go into non-public. Oh, wow. I'll definitely motion that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. All right, perfect. All in favor of going into non-public? Thank you all. Bye.